So I guess um, first question: You've done you've done a lot of um, varied things in your directing career, um, from superhero films to Shakespeare. What about uh, telling a classic fairy tale like Cinderella um, appeal to you and was this something you kind of always had in the back of your mind? No, I didn't have it in the back of my mind. It was, a, it was a, just a great big surprise, frankly. Um, and that was an exciting surprise. And uh, I was excited that there was a, a real um, s story with women, etc. cetera, of it, frankly, uh, which was going to be new for me in, in that kind of form. Um, and I was particularly surprised by how... Um, emotional it was. I think that really, really caught my uh, imagination and uh, it felt that we could, we, could, um, we could do something quite sort of significant inside the story by adjusting her character um, while still delivering a classical version of it that delivered the big things, you know, pumpkins and, um, you know, mice turning into horses, etc. So, so it was a beautiful surprise that, that I knew off the big challenge. Lily spoke about uh, when she got the phone call from you. When did you know that she was Cinderella? Uh, pretty early on, really. I mean, the th the thing is, you have a, a big, you know, it's a big deal for Disney. Um, uh, so they they really need to feel comfortable. They like it there to be a comparative process. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty hard in these situations to just say that person and everybody jumps up right. and down. I think they need to. And, and, and sometimes the script is, is evolving a little more than it has with us. Ours was a fairly true and, 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 and simple and direct. Uh, it, it, didn't go, it didn't go crazy in terms of a sideways development step. Um, so what we needed from Cinderella was always the same. Um, and uh, it was you know, generosity of spirit and um, a kind of uh, lightness of touch and a lovely voice and a, and a kind of sense of fun and the, the absurd and everything. And she has all of that. And, um, and so I guess I knew in a process that was maybe five, six, seven auditions, I guess I knew, you know, pretty, pretty early on. Um, but uh, it was good to work through the process whereby, you know, we could uh, eventually um, say yes, and it's a lovely phone call to make. Mm -hmm. The film felt like this massive, just beautiful poem. You know, did you, was the... Was that intentional, you know, from your end? Uh, we definitely wanted an immersive experience. We wanted something where, the, the, you know, you, you could sort of taste and smell and feel the whole thing and, and, and the sumptuous nature of what uh, Dante Ferretti did and, and Sandy Powell and, and Harris Sambalukos was important to, uh, to give people a real um, uh, a, a feeling about going to the ball, basically. Or, to begin with, being at a picnic or being in the house and everything. And... Um, so definitely unabashedly romantic and full-blooded. But we wanted to try and earn it all the time. And uh, so it was important for us to feel when you meet the family at the beginning that there's genuine affection between them, that there's fun, that there's a family that's functioning. Dad comes back from being away, gives the wife a big kiss, you know, it's a passionate world. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we just, we, uh, we kept talking, all the key department heads you know, kept talking at all, at all times, and we, 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 we planned very carefully, we storyboarded a lot, and, and uh, uh, it was always kind of, it was a movie that was always going to try and come from the heart, and really via Cinderella's heart. Um, so, uh, and I think she sees the world in slightly poetic terms, you know, mm -hmm. as, as we say, you know, she likes to try and see the world as it could be, not necessarily as it is, which is a line from Cervantes, uh, from Don Quixote. Uh, when, when he's tilting at windmills and um, they talk about madness. The full line is, uh, who knows where madness lies, perhaps in too much sanity is madness, but perhaps maddest of all to see the world as it is and not as it could be. And so Cinderella was, uh, was uh, in that sense, I'm, I'm pro-dreamers. <laughs> and, you know, Don Quixote was a dreamer tilting at windmills. Cinderella, you know, is a, you might argue was a bit of a dreamer, but she's a beautiful dreamer. So in the Disney cartoon, the woman that did the voice of Lady Tremaine also provided the voice of Maleficent. And I know, I think most of us probably saw the Angelina Jolie version, and she just seemed like she was popped into that film and was very encompassing of the Maleficent character. Can you talk a little about Kate Blanchett? Because she takes a very different deviation than what I would associate as Lady Tremaine. I loved every second of it. She's this bourgeoisie, irreverent cold woman. Mm -hmm. So what was kind of the discussion with her in, in this well, character? Well, it was to come in and, you know, be full-blooded with, uh, with uh, these wonderful costumes of Sandy Powell. So, so she was going to come in with an amazing silhouette, you know, and with, uh, uh, with a cat on a leash. 
and um, and uh, uh, you know she she and with a veil and with the biggest hat in the world uh, that she would see, seize the chance to be the movie villainess and give that with relish, which she does because she's a great great actress with wonderful skills, but um, but definitely to allow for a moment whereby we could see the backstory that Chris White provides be be embodied with a sense of her, um, depends how you view her, her pain or her, her loss. Um, but that she could be, you know, multi-dimensional in the hands of a terrific actress like that. Um, and it would surprise us. Um, and I think, uh, I think people are, are surprised by it. When we previewed the film, interestingly enough, um, we, uh, a lot of people were very struck by and commented on the fact that they liked very much the idea this surprising idea that Cinderella at the end says, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but at the same time, there was quite a vocal minority who said, we want to see another scene where uh, Lady Tremaine is in the streets without clothes, <laughs> <laughs> without goods, and being, being, being sort of punished. Um, so she creates, inevitably, she creates strong feeling. And what I loved about what Kate did was that she was un unafraid about that. She neither played for sympathy when she told the story of her broken heart, nor, nor does she care what they think about her when, when, uh, when she comes in. I mean, she, she particularly was fascinated by cruelty between girls, as she commented on this when she came in. And uh, in a way, she, she felt obliged to give the sort of vehemence that she does when she's part of that naming scene and has that sort of yeah. horrible laugh, mm -hmm. as the, she says, Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. But she was brilliant, brilliant, fun to work with. Richard and Lily both spoke about that first scene with the horses and that being the first day of filming. You know, yeah. was that was that a technique that you used that you know they would connect instantly? I or? think it was deliberate to try and uh, have it to be the least kind of polished. I mean, we were already uh, on horseback, which was good because there was an unpredictability inevitably. Mm -hmm. uh, we also were physically because they were on real horses. We didn't want to spook the horses. We were further away with the cameras on longer lenses, so mm -hmm. we were letting, as it were, we we were. Overhearing the scene rather than having them. Often with horses, you get close and maybe a, a groom will hold the horse's head while you know a camera physically gets closer so that they, nobody gets hurt. Um, but um, in this case, they were controlling the horses and we were further away. And, and, and it was a and we were in this ancient woodland. I don't know if they mentioned the, the, the place, the part of the Windsor Great Park that we were in. Special permission of the Queen to film there. Yeah, um, wow. Was uh, 600, 650 years old these oak trees. Wow, so wow. these were. So it was important to be in a special place. These were oak trees older than Shakespeare. Yeah, so oh, wow. was, I, I enjoyed saying on the morning. I said, "This place you're in. This was here. And these trees were here before Hamlet was written." Wow. You know, wow. uh, so it's an unusual spot, and I think they're very sensitive. The two of them, in a good way. So they, you could feel that they were. So this, they're now doing their scene in, in a magical place. Were there any other scenes in particular that you were interested, or that you were looking forward to shooting? Well, the ballroom sequence for sure. Uh, a little intimidated by the size mm -hmm. and the scale of it, and the, and the necessity to um, make sure that the sort of buoyancy and the energy of it were really were really um, inviting the audience for the movie to, to come to the ball. Uh, between the learning, the the uh, uh, the dance and the music and the people dealing with corsets and the rest of it, um, there was quite a bit of organising to do. Um, but the days uh, shooting it were phenomenally happy, and there was one day in the middle where we, we uh, I mean, we shot the dances many, many times. But there was one day in the middle where we shot all, all of the dances. There were three or four involving everybody, uh, and we, we just needed to. Uh, Rob Ashton, the choreographer, said, "Do them all one day. Do at least some of all of them one day, because it's better than the, the actors doing the same dance again and again and again." Mm -hmm. Uh, and we did, and so it was like there was this incredible endorphin storm on the 007 stage of Pinewood, <laughs> and where this enclosed, um, massive uh, ballroom was. Uh, that really was the, one of the most remarkable days of my life, full stop, where, where it, it, it seemed as though people were leaving that uh, ballroom uh, walking on air. And I'm talking not only about the people in costumes and things, but the crew, and uh, there was a sense of, of, of the. Um, the, uh, some, somehow how important the Cinderella story was and how important that emblem is. That somehow in your life, whether it's an actual ball or not, you get to do something that's really as much fun as that, as much, uh, with as much release as that. It was magical then. It surely was magical, yeah. yeah. As a Disney fan, I noticed there's a lot of um, visual nods to the animated classic, um, like when she's setting up 
table with the cups, like they're kind of in that same order, um, and the staircase leading up to the attic. Were there things that were important to you to kind of pay homage visually to in the uh, film? I, to some extent, uh, in as much as the, the, I tell you a lesson I've learned from, from Shakespeare, from doing Shakespeare films, is that sometimes if you go too far with a, um, a visual idea or concept, people can sometimes be alarmed. You know, it takes them out of the movie, it, distur it disturbs mm -hmm. more than it illuminates. Um, and so it's a very subtle, it's a very subtle process by which you can do something new or even radical. And I think you have to let people feel comfortable inside that before they'll go with a slightly different idea. So some of that in this case was visual, but also some of it was, a rem in a way I reminded myself of how bold the original movie had been, um, uh, although packed with animals and singing and dancing. Uh, but it also has three or four what I'd call really gothic touches, big, German expressionist kinds of shots when she gets the dress ripped she runs out to the to the um, garden and the big sideways Dutch angles of massive staircase in the back it's really quite <laughs> but a big sort of grand kind of uh, um, effect uh, so we, we put well, there's a little nod to, to just the, 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 the size of that but um, more the the spirit the more there's because we were in a coming in a way emotionally from a completely different place. It was more the spirit of uh, the, 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 the texture of the ball and the, and the savagery of it. I mean, I mean, my favorite image, we don't quite do it, but, but uh, here's the translation really, is, is in, you'll recall in the original 1950 one, there's a scene where early on in the picture, Cinderella brings, cover, brings a tray of tea to uh, the stepmother, and from the back of the four post of bed, there's just a shape, and then there's two deadly green eyes, and then she leans forward out of the shadow. Big, uh, and it's a very scary image, I think. Well, we don't do that, but we do have we do have Kate Blanchett from behind with a kind of you know Barbara Stanwyck kind of you know razor edged shoulders, just bring this uh, you know slipper up, and it's 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 in the same kind of territory or the same vocabulary of uh, I, I mean, I, not that I wish to do it for. Uh, um, in any horrid way, but I would imagine, I would hope that that might be an image that would live with kids for a while as well. It's just that just when you thought you got away with it, oh my god, now she's in the attic! <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like the alien suddenly arriving in uh, another part of the ship. When Cinderella originally came out, the animated film, it was sort of like a Cinderella story for the Walt Disney Studios because of the impacts of World War II and what the studio was going through, you know. What did it feel like to breathe such fresh air in, into this, this script and the story? Well, um, you know, the, the Disney company have recently been with Frozen and, and, and Maleficent, uh, also Frozen's animated, uh, but with that phenomenon and with, with uh, Maleficent and, uh, you know, with some other movies that have, um, I think, been really taking a fresh look at what they're doing and what was interesting and a positive atmosphere to work in was this feeling that Disney are very committed to um, taking what are public domain properties, these, these, these um, fairy tales, uh, but, but have their own brand on them, you know, through, the, through the, the great success of the animated films into the live action realm. And, um, and they know it's a, it's a kind of, it's a big ask, you know, to try and find the way to recreate that kind of success um, and, and, uh, and, and, and maybe inside a style and a world that somehow has some cohesion. So I felt they were, they were at the start of, some, of, a, of, a, of a reinvention that, that, that meant the atmosphere was new and innovative and, and frankly not dissimilar to the atmosphere I felt at Marvel when I was there with Thor, which was only the third of the pictures in their first phase of their, of their um, um, epic journey into, into moviness. Um, and so there's something, a, a little a, a, a sense of, of um, filmmakers being at the beginning of something new and different and that they're excited about. So it was a good atmosphere to be in. Cinderella does some singing in the film, um, but you you saved the, the the songs from the original film for the credits. Yeah. Was that intentional? I don't know. At, at some point, we weren't we weren't sure whether we wanted any songs at all. Um, uh, Cinderella, Lily actually knew all the songs from the original movie, and you can hear her. <laughs> she does sing uh, for the. Uh, movie trivia buffs uh, among you. There is a little snatch of Sing Sweet Nightingale, mm -hmm. you might have caught, just as mm -hmm. she goes uh, hunting for an egg. Um, but uh, we, 
it, it just felt as though the, the sort of gravitational weight of what we were doing wasn't quite allowing for songs. And in a way, there was a sort of energy to the movie in, 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 in what, what still contains a lot of music. Patrick Shaw's mm -hmm. done a lot of music in the, in the score, uh, but that we didn't want to take it that step further. Uh, but Lou's got a lovely voice, as you know, and she sang it beautifully, and Hattie had fun. And we got, Patrick and I wrote the, wrote the song that precedes that, the, mm -hmm. first, the first one, so we got a chance to do something that was also uh, a kind of um, a musical response at the end that we felt like a fitting, a fitting kind of combination of songs rather than, rather than in the middle. Richard mentioned that uh, you and Lily and Richard will reunite for Romeo and Juliet? Yes, we will. Or, yeah. yeah, we will, and that's exciting. Also, I love working with them, and I think they have the unique chemistry, and, and uh, uh, they both have you know, significant sort of theatre skills as well, so I, I think it'll be, and that will be quite an adventure. Are you excited yeah. to go back to the stage? Yes, I am, yeah, 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 yeah. I find, uh, I find that I'm, I'm so lucky to be able to move a little between things, mm -hmm. um, and that you, you, you tend to go back to the medium you grew up in uh, with even more uh, relish when you had these, these big kind of, uh, big kind of adventures like, uh, like this one. But you know, the you know, the cast of uh, Cinderella is peopled with folk who've, uh, you know, danced in and out of my uh, professional yeah. life anyway, mm -hmm. often is the case. So Derek Jacobi, you know, I saw him play Hamlet when I was 17, and he, mm -hmm. and he directed me, and then I directed him. <laughs> so it was, uh, and Stellan Starsgaard from, uh, Skarsgård from Thor, mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, various other people make, make, make appearances. So I feel as though there's always been a sort of informal repertoire company that, that, that uh, um, continues medium to medium, so it's very nice to think of um, uh, Richard and Lily and me all joining up on the, on the, on the stage, and maybe, maybe we'll end up back in a movie of it, I don't know. With the ending of I Forgive You, will we be seeing a sequel? Or well, interesting a question. I tell you, you are the first person to ask that. <laughs> um, you are literally the first person to ask that. Um, uh, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know but it's not a no. It's not a no. <laughs> There's hope. I think. Congratulations. Thank beautiful, you. beautiful mu movie. Everything about it was perfect. Thank and um, looking at it, I, with Maleficent, they, there was quite a bit from my end of it changed to who Maleficent is and whatnot. With Cinderella, I went into it last night thinking, oh, please don't change it. Please. <laughs> and it was, of course, for me, spot on um, with perfect little touches all over. And um, were there scenes that were deleted or, or rewritten or whatnot that would have caused it to be a different uh, storyline? Well, there were scenes that were deleted, but actually they were, they were simply for time, timing reasons. I don't think... I think we were, we were one of the... When I sat down with Ali Shermer, one of our producers, um, I, uh, I said, uh, uh, right at the beginning of the process, I said, you know, here's my big idea for the film. My job is to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I said, this, this uh, two and a half thousand years this story has been working, mm -hmm. and many, many versions of it have been working. And uh, we can, from the inside out with the central character, do something really significant in a subtle way with a huge impact. But I want to develop to, to deliver a classical version of Cinderella in live action. I don't want to, I won't copy the original movie, uh, but I, I, I will I, I will come at this from a sort of classical point of view. Uh, are there scenes, so you'll see scenes that have been deleted on, on future you know Blu-ray or well however it ends up being delivered out into the world. Um, but um, and, and you'll see they're more about extensions of of, 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 of elements of the picture rather than. Um, uh, there, there are no scenes of Cinderella pun punching the stepmother on the nose <laughs> yet, although maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll do one. I have to steal him. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.